meet you, Lou. It's great to have you. And um, yeah, thank you for joining us today. This is going to be your eighth episode of our isolation interview series. And we'd like to have you here with us today to talk about your new single, Vanilla. And um, yeah, just before we get started, do you want to just like tell us a little bit, a little bit about yourself, who you are and how you got into music? Yeah, so I'm Katie Lou. I'm 20 years old. Um, I initially started with classical guitar. I started playing when I was nine. Um, and then I did pretty well at that, to be fair. I did that for a couple of years. And then I just kind of got into playing chords and messing around with some lyrics and stuff when I was about 12. And I, yeah, I just kind of snowballed from there. I started writing more and more and then playing to my family and playing at open mics. And here I am. <laughs> <laughs> this is the product. Um, can you tell us a bit about the single and what was the inspiration behind it? Uh, so, um, yeah, Vanilla's kind of a, I like to write like in groups about different things that happened or whatever, but this was quite a standalone song. It was one that I thought I hit the nail on the head first time with like the meaning behind it. Um, but it was kind of a friend of mine that um, we seemed to fall in and out of love with each other at different times than kind of when the other one was more of a friend and then it would kind of seesaw back and forth like that. We never quite got the timing right on that. So um, it's kind of a song about that kind of confusion of where we both stood and that sort of thing. Yeah, that's the gist of it. <laughs> so what has the reaction been like to Vanilla so far, and which is, which is your latest release? And what was it like to release a new single as a new artist during a global pandemic? And how do you think it differs to your songs that feature on your household EP? Yeah, so it was really nice to release something uh, new because I recorded Households long before I put it on Spotify. So it was nice to written, record and release like sort of in the same like time space, which was nice. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think I built myself up a lot more at that point as a uh, original artist. So I got quite well better feedback and more feedback than I had for my older stuff. Um, I don't think it differs much. It's still kind of hints on that like kind of house party sort of um drinking smoking kind of vibe yeah. That kind of, um yeah that kind of era of teenage house party sort of thing um but yeah it was it was hard obviously with the pandemic I literally got my release gig on the last day of public closing that night and my original venue fell through last minute and I was so stressed I was like this has to happen this is my last chance like to gig so I managed to squeeze in with a local pub and they had us so it was quite quiet it wasn't really what I was expecting but yeah um, to still get that kind of launch party in just at the start there <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was mental <laughs> Remember the first song that you wrote and what was it about? <laughs> I remember that, oh, did it have any meaning? I'm not sure. It was kind of just a mash of stuff, but um, I think I wrote it about 12. It was one of the first songs and I remember the kind of um, the tune to it. Um, and I remember like showing it to my mum and dad in the morning when it was my guitar and they filmed it for me. It was really naff, but um, <laughs> I can <laughs> kind of remember the tune. It was kind of just repetitive, like trying to sing about things I didn't know about. I was like, yeah, party, woo, when I was <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was just kind of, I think I took more inspiration from artists I was listening to at that time and just kind of mashed some stuff together. Yeah. Uh, while back. Um, <laughs> how would you describe your sound and who are your biggest influences? Um, think I've, I've kind of gone with an indie folk kind of label, I think. Yeah, the there is that kind of sound there, definitely, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what I've kind of settled on but um, I'm open to different things. Um, what was the other bit? <laughs> uh, who are your biggest influences? Influences. Um, I don't know, I listen to a massive like selection of stuff. I used to listen to a lot of indie rock and I kind of like that, the vibes, they have like that kind of, um, like that city nights out, that sort of um, deep conversations, that sort of vibe. I really like that. And I thought, I think that kind of, yeah, I took a lot of that in households. But um, now I listen to so much different stuff, things I would call rubbish, to be honest. <laughs> but um, yeah, I take a lot of, I think mostly myself and my friends, I take inspiration really, but I listen to a lot of different artists at the moment. Yeah, so what is the creative process in the production of your music? And like, where do your ideas for your songs usually stem from? So I write a lot about myself really like how I've dealt with situations or how I'm feeling about things I, it's kind of how I process my own emotions really um, but a lot of households and 
a lot of the stuff I'm, I've written like post lockdown really it was a lot to do with my friends and nights out but how they were kind of dealing with things and the things they were going through as well like me and my friends are pretty close so it's um yeah I like go through a lot of things they do so I like to write about that as a whole um but yeah I, don't <laughs> I keep forgetting the other questions I go <laughs> my memory's terrible um what is your fondest music memory if you could invite five musicians dead or alive to dinner who would they be my um, fondest music memory, um, it's probably my first gig to be honest, it was about four years ago and I just remember it was just at my local and he was like the owner was just paying me you know like a little bit of cash sort of thing but I remember like the whole pub kind of like so supportive and they did a little whip round for me and it was, it was just nice to like finally do that and get some money for some, doing what I love. Um, five musicians dead or alive, um, Amy Winehouse yeah she'd be really good um Hosier I'm a big fan of would really like to support him that's that's, that's, that's Hosier yeah love Hosier yeah that's cool um I do like Elvis like it's not really my music but I think he he is just so funky I really like covering his songs um as we got Johnny Cash I'm a big fan of as well and hmm Probably Lana Del Rey would be another one. Love Lana Del Rey. She's class. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I really like her songwriting. She's cool. I was supposed to see her last February and the tour got cancelled. I saw that, that. yeah. Pretty annoying, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so who would be your dream artist to collaborate with? Um, I th yeah, I think Hosier. I don't know, like, I, I don't listen to him an awful lot, but when I do, it's just, I don't know, there's just something about it. You can hear, like, everything's so deep, and I quite like to have those hidden meanings in my songs. And I just think, I think we would gel. I think I kind of <laughs> get uh, inspiration from him as well. Um, yeah, that would be so cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, what is your dream venue to play, and what was the first song you ever played? Um... So I've tried... No, the first <laughs> venue you ever played. Sorry, not the first time. <laughs> so, yeah, the first venue was my local, which is literally directly opposite my house, which is really cool. Um, so we just all popped over, we all piled in. Um, that was really fun. Obviously knew everyone, so it was quite a relaxed start to my career, really. Um, but dream venue, I'm, I keep trying to conquer the pub. See, so, yeah, I had a gig for the pub um, coming up last April, which got cancelled. And I do bug them quite a lot for gigs. <laughs> but that's my stepping stone. Once I've played La Pub, then I'll think of bigger places. But that's okay. <laughs> so how have you been adapting to the, to the current pandemic situation as a new artist and like upcoming musician releasing music in times where you can't play it live? So like have you been doing like any live streams or like, you know, how are you promoting your new singles when like you can't tour at the moment? yeah so um yeah i have been doing a lot of live streams at the start especially um a lot of facebook lives i was kind of doing them quite as a regular thing and they were really fun it was i got really into them and people showed like loads of support to them so it was a nice little touch to like kind of get you through but nothing's the same as gigs is it um <laughs> yeah definitely not but i did get a chance to write so much music so i think it has benefited me in a way because i just i've written a good hundred songs I think over a lot of time I <laughs> banged them out and I think now as we go back into it I can come back a bit stronger with more material and yeah be a bit more picky about what I do which is good. Um, What was the first like album you ever bought? Ooh that's a good one. Oh first album. Do you know what I don't I don't know, I just used to raid my mum and dad's CDs, to be honest, things like Stereophonics and Coldplay and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, summer tunes. Um, yeah, I don't, maybe, probably a Taylor Swift album, I'd oh, say. Yeah. Good, good, good. Yeah, good choice, yeah. We, love, we like, love Taylor Swift and her new album, yeah. Laura, like, un unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, that or Avril Lavigne thinking about it was probably... Actually, yeah, favorite. Avril was my, my first one as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so if you could change anything about the music industry what would it be and do you feel like there needs to be like more support provided by the government obviously like you know you're in the UK 
Um, so like like you could just answer from the UK perspective. But um, yeah, so like do you think that the, the government should be providing like more support for artists during a global pandemic? And you know, what has been the biggest challenge that you face musically during this time? Yeah. Um I think what's hard with music is a lot I do a lot of cover gigs, but I'm venturing away from those a bit, obviously to try and push more original stuff. But um pubs do tend to and live music venues really but i understand a bit more with live music venues they do struggle with um kind of funding and things like that but pubs tend to want a lot for nothing sometimes <laughs> i can see going back after this lockdown they'll want to do those events but won't be able to afford it and yeah it's gonna yeah. be a bit of a pain. but um i think like at the start of lockdown i got quite a bit of support but not from the government. I found a lot of sites that were there to help musicians. I thought it was amazing. I, I, like the funding out there that people had just scraped together was incredible. But the government have kind of left us stranded. I think like there are so many ways we could work around it, doing outside gigs or, you know, even just like you could grab like a giant visor. Like there's so <laughs> yeah. much more distant than if we were like, we're allowed to go to the pub drinking, but we're probably more distant if we are gigging. So <laughs> I think it's been a bit of bit frustrating, really. Definitely. Um, were you at any gigs uh, pre-COVID that inspired you? Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, I was on a bit of a, a mini gig kind of, what's the word? I don't know. I was on a roll with those, really. I was finding gigs that were like one pound to five pounds. And I was <laughs> a lot of my friends as well, which was really nice. I like I love big gigs. I love seeing like people that I like listening to. But I think going to your friends' gigs and supporting little musicians is just something so wholesome about it. And I think at those little venues, you always just think like I want to be up there. I'm like I want to do that, and it does kind of push you a bit more. Um, I think what was the last gig I was at? I think that was one at La Pub um, Supermarine. I think, and that was just really fun because I was like they were pretty much like a little bit popular, more popular than me, and I was like yeah, I can get there. Like I can do that and kind of pushing myself for that yeah um so the next question is um like who i know like you're, you're british but like if you know like any irish artists um like who is your favorite irish artist at the minute like like you said mentioned earlier hosier but like you listen to like like so like maybe dermot kennedy or anyone else and like even in the local british music scene where you're from in wales who have you been like enjoying recently as well yeah honestly i probably know so many irish artists and i would i wouldn't even know i don't <laughs> I think I'm a bit flailed in there, but um, yeah, I do listen to quite a lot of different ones. But um, I found a playlist the other day, which was Welsh artists, and I was like really surprised by the amount in there, like Marina and the Diamonds, Stereophonics, like all these people that you just don't really think came from this little tiny place. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's loads. Um, I don't know really. I hate to admit it, but I've been listening to a lot of things like Ash Nico and Brooke Candy and things like that recently. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I don't like talking about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have a favourite at the moment. I kind of listen to a mash of things. But yeah. To do my okay. music, my artists are from. <laughs> um, is there any advice you would like to give to someone who might be watching this uh, interview who is a like, especially young female artists who yeah. want to kind of, like pursue a career in the music industry? Yeah. Um, I think. Like when I was, obviously I've been doing this for four years or so and I've learned just little tricks as I go. A lot of the things as sad as it is, you, you get kind of overlooked. Even if I'm turning up to my own gig at a venue, um, owners tended to either go shake the hand of my dad or somebody I was with at the time, like and like that sort of thing. And you do get kind of overlooked. So I think just especially female artists, I think don't be afraid to kind of take up a bit more space and make your voice heard and be a bit more demanding about what you want because other people are and they get things so <laughs> I always kind of been quite shy um unless I'm up on stage really so I think I've learned to just kind of take control a little bit more and make sure I'm not overlooked in that aspect yeah definitely yeah it's good advice so um obviously like over the course of lockdown like people have been finding times quite difficult so what has been your go-to song to pick you up during a hard time Ooh. Um, I go to song. Sure, you know <laughs> honestly, I feel really embarrassed about what I've been listening to recently. It's really, <laughs> but um, I've been listening to "Dance with Me" by Dizzy Rascal. It's been my kind of workout, kind of pick me up song at the minute. Um, but um, I have actually as well the Rivers. I do really love listening to them. Honestly, I think it's Catfish half of the time, and yeah. they get that yeah. nice kind of going out vibe that I've been missing. So yeah, they've kind of been helping me. 
transport back to that, which is nice. Yeah, they're a class bunch of lads with a class sound. Um, yeah. What does the future have in store for you? And is there any goals that you'd like to achieve? Um, yeah, so I'm kind of, I like to take baby steps. I think if you just build it up like one focus at a time rather than the bigger picture, you can get where you go in a bit easier. But um, my goal at the minute is to finally, finally get an album together. Um, I've recently been taken under the wing of a new label, um, Dirty Carrot. They're just kind of starting up and they're going to be recording with me soon. So yeah, I'm really excited to get an album done and like kind of find my groove, like what kind of music I want to put out. I think that's my main goal, just to find who I am really in, in music. And yeah, get that album out and have an experiment with some things and see where it goes really. Yeah, yeah that'd be so exciting. Like, I was yeah. like, I'm new. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so the next question is, how do you feel about women in the music industry? Like, especially like, you know, you can talk about the UK as in like the British industry. So yeah, um, yeah do you think to get enough airplay over in the UK? And um, what challenges have you faced as a female artist? Do you think um, that, like, you know, mainly if you're a male artist, you might succeed more? What do you think? Yeah, um, I think in general, obviously, I listen to a lot of female artists. So for me, looking from like a distant point of view, I think, yeah, they're doing great. They're doing so much. It's amazing. But obviously, when you get closer to that, you read into things, you look into things. It, it is just that little bit harder, I think, for most women in anything, to be honest. Yeah. But, um, yeah. For me, I just think I've always noticed such a massive difference in the support for boy bands in particular and any female artist, female bands or female solo singers or anything. I just think there's something about like boy bands in general. There's just something people, I don't know, they seem to get a lot more support, I think, in that aspect. Um, I think female solo artists especially are overlooked because we don't tend to get the crowd buzzing or like, you know, that kind of dance vibe, but it doesn't mean that our music's not important and there are people that want to listen to it and there's different kinds of vibes you can have on a night out or different venues, you know? I think we need to be given a bit more of a chance, really. 100%, yeah. definitely, yeah. So, um, yeah, so Katie, thank you so much for talking to us today. And um, yeah, that's, that was mainly the conclusion of our interview. But before we before we say goodbye, we just want to say, we just want to tell people, where can we find you on social media? So like your Instagram, your maybe your, your Facebook page, what's your handle there? Yeah, so Instagram is uh, Katie Lou Music, all mushed together. Um, that's where I post mainly, but I do put a lot of information on my Facebook as well, which is Katie Lou. Um, yeah, that's where I post events and things like that. Um, I do my Spotify as well, again, Katie Lou and YouTube and things like that. So pretty much anywhere you can find me, can't hide. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, my Instagram and Facebook are the main ones for updates and things like that. Cool. And you can find Katie's latest single, Vanilla, on Spotify, Apple Music, and pretty much all the major music streaming platforms. So we really recommend that you check it out because Katie is really, really class and we can't wait to hear more from her. Yeah, so greatly thank you so much for chatting to us today and giving up your time and you. looking forward to hearing what you have in store for the future. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me anyway. No problem at all. Thank so you. have a great evening and yeah, we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. I've here so many times that I've forgotten who we are in each other's lives. I a friend to you, or are you a lover to me? Whenever we find ourselves together, we can never see.